been it's been a, a crazy few months for you yeah. and, and crazy time. So I gotta ask. I mean, uh, does it almost feel good? I guess to get away and to, to be focusing on a fight and, and maybe not you know everything that's going on in your community. Uh, I had the fight booked uh, when the when the nonsense went down in Kenosha. So it's been on my mind ever since. You know, on my mind now. It's been asked a couple times already for a guy here. And don't expect any great interview today because bedtime. And <laughs> I'm just trying to get through, so I apologize. But uh, yeah, it's been a, uh, you know, it's this. As you see, I'm unconsciously trying to get my mind off of it again because yeah. uh, my city got terrorized and uh, the community got shattered, and you know. I, I was I put myself right in the middle. I love people on both sides, and I got ripped to shreds by some. But I was I held my ground because I, I believe in my community, and it just I have so many friends. My gym has showed. I said people don't understand this bubble that I created for myself ten years ago in my gym, and it's the closest thing I got to world peace because I have so many cultures, so many colors coming to my gym. We don't care what their jobs are. We all come in. We work together. We do mixed martial arts together, and it's a beautiful thing. And I guess that's what it's taught me about life. And if I can do it in that gym, why can't we all do it? That's awesome. You've had a couple of big wins uh, recently, man. Did it did it help to kind of, you know, bring confidence back or, or bring faith back that you know I'm on the right path, doing the right things? Uh, it's it's I have to just do more. Um, I'm just. Just last fight went to a decision, and I just don't believe it should went to a decision. It's you know, it's me. Uh, I got to go out and perform my best. So ultimately, with you know the people I ask, what are my goals? Where I'm headed? It's always about being the best mixed martial artist I can be, and I haven't full. I don't believe I fulfilled that yet. I know I have potential to end fights in glorious fashion, on the ground and on the feet. So that's what it's about, and uh, I'm not going to be satisfied or happy unless I go out and get a finish. What do you think about the matchup here with Martin? Do you think is it set up as a guy that, that you can potentially finish in there? Every fight is potential finish. There's there's no doubt in my mind. I don't care who it's against. It's just the last four fights, the people have picked a particular style to fight me. Um, Tabura doesn't use that, so I'm interested. But that doesn't mean anything because people change their camps when they match up against me. So it'll be interested. I'm, I'm more or less prepared for whatever, but if he comes to engage me like he has, it should make for a great fight. Nice. Has sleep been a challenge for you since you've been here? Or is this the time that you're normally well, this is time. It's just time to go to bed. Um, it, it's been a little bit of a challenge because it was first supposed to be a 7 a.m. main card. Uh, and then it's, you know, as of yesterday, it's a 4 a.m. So that's three hours. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to bed and waking up, and then I'm going to take on the fight. Other people are making it at the end of their night. I'm going to make it at the beginning of my night. So I just have to get some sleep. Very nice. I know you said the goal is, you know, just be the best fist martial artist you can. I mean, what do, you, what do you see the rest of this year playing out like for you? I mean, do you do you want to continue fighting, or is, is it difficult with everything that you're dealing with at home? Oh, if it wasn't for this, I don't know. It would be a real mess. So, you know, again, it just doesn't save my life. But... Uh, I'm just forever proud to be part of the UFC and to go out and perform and entertain. Uh, I think it helps take everybody's mind off of things, especially when I go out and fight good. And, uh, you know, ultimately my, f my faith has changed or it's increased the last couple of years. And uh, it's, as I'll say, it's, it's in God's hands right now. The only reason I'm here right now is, is God's <laughs> God put me here. So he'll decide how long I continue to fight. Do you believe competing on those earlier uh, pandemic cards in Jacksonville helps prepare you for another pandemic fight like this, like in the early, well, back when we didn't really know anything about what's happening in the world right now? I would say the experience didn't hurt. Um, you know, a fighter, is, this is their first fight since, you know, their first experience. I'm sure it's a pretty big shock going through all the quarantines, all extra testing. Uh, but we're fighters. I mean, we're, we're pretty... Pretty good at adapting, so. Was Fight Island a, a destination you wanted to fight on? A lot of fighters in the U.S. don't really want to make the trip. Some specifically asked for it. What about yourself? You know, there's both sides to it for me as well. But the main thing is, is that right now this this entire world's going through something we've never went through with COVID, and the fact the UFC is able to 
put this together. I was I was proud to be part of the Jan Jacksonville card, and so be it. I'm here in Abu Dhabi, and you know they they have a great setup here, and I'm getting a chance to compete again when a lot of people don't get to compete. So I just look at my blessings and be thankful. I don't want to dwell on it, but you said something about your community and, and stepping into the middle that interested me. What is it like to be attacked from both sides, not for a mistake you've made, but for something that you just think is right? Does that make it harder or does it make it easier because you still feel that you're right? So that week was, you know, I, I like to believe I got pretty thick skin. It's probably the only reason I was able to get through it. But the comments, it, it, it was... I had a choice and a lot of people around me were like, don't engage, just put it out there, leave it at that. And for me, that was totally useless. The biggest impact I had, it was, it was very, it took a lot of energy out of me, but I had a lot of private messages and I had a lot of stuff where I reached out to people. And by doing that, that what I received from that, I won't say every time, but, but many, many times it turned into a positive conversation. And for me, that, that, that meant something that, that really, um, resonated with people and it, it turned into something organic and you know it's, it's about communication that I had to live what I was preaching you know and I was there for people and I heard both sides I said hey you know I'm gonna listen to you try to listen to where I'm coming from and when they did they seemed to change their stance and appreciate where I was coming from and that's all I could ask for I was going to ask do you feel that uh, you either got people to change their stance or at least be open to the idea of a dialogue which seems to be something we're missing a little bit in today's world. That's what it is, is we're too quick just to point fingers. People just make up their mind and, you know, you, we're human beings. And we have to remember that none of us are perfect and we're gonna disagree, but you don't hate. You gotta just listen and appreciate each other and understand that, that that's it, we're human beings. And at the end of the day, we gotta love each other. You said it wasn't going to be a good interview. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs>